Also, he does this print uh, engraving Night, Death, and the Devil, which is uh, symbolic of the Christ The knight symbolizes the Christian warrior, that is, the, the, the Christian soul moving through the world of temptation and difficulty and fear towards the high city or the uh, representing heaven. So the knight, of course, Albrecht Durer has been aware of uh, the sculptures, the mon he, he been to Italy, he would have seen um, the equestrian mon monument of uh, Marcus Aurelius, he would be aware of Donatello's, um, Enri uh, Donatello's um, equestrian monument to Erasmo, no, Erasmo de, de Narni. He would have been aware of Verrocchio's uh, monument, uh, equestrian monument of uh, Colleoni. And in keeping with this tradition, he depicts the Christian knight. Um, the w armor is actually symbolic. I think it's the book of Ephesians 4 in the New Testament where um, the Christian is exhorted to take on the helmet of salvation, uh, the breastplate of faith, and uh, the sword of truth, and so on. Um, so this is symbolic of the Christian soul moving through uh, the world, but remaining faithful and steadfast. We see death as a scary figure full of serpents and uh, worms and stuff there, who holds the hourglass, uh, but the knight is, moves on unafraid, uh, and a really, really scary devil there on the right. So we have night, death, and the devil and we see the Christian soul moving steadfastly, courageously on towards uh, this new Jerusalem, this um, city on this hill, which is symbolic of heaven. Albrecht Altdorfer was uh, uh, painted this incredible uh, five and a half foot tall painting of the Battle of Issus, the decisive battle um, between uh, ancient Greece, uh, that is uh, um, Alexander the Great, uh, who wins the battle um, against uh, Darius the first of the Persians. So the routing of the Persian army is underway. We have this cosmological view, uh, bird's eye view, if you will, based on maps of the time. Um, we're looking across a body of water, uh, possibly a representation of Cyprus there, and then the Nile uh, Delta region beyond. So it's kind of a, like a view from space, uh, this cosmological view of the battle of Isis with many, many soldiers, every tiny little detail there. using contemporary dress. Um, this is uh, around the same time as some conflicts with uh, uh, the Turks. Well, in a contemporary sense. So having double meaning there, painted for the regents of Austria who are fighting against the Ottoman Turks at this time.
Altdorfer. Hans Holbein, the younger son of Hans Holbein, who we looked at his beautiful portraits from before. Hans Holbein, then the younger, to escape the, uh, the war and strife of the Protestant Reformation in his hometown of Basel. Through some connections he makes, um, he moves to England and works in the court of Henry VIII. Um, and um, he has painted with such incredible enamel-like paint the incredible specificity of these French ambassadors, Jean de Dinville and Georges de Selve. Uh, true to the northern tradition, there are a few hidden symbols in there, uh, broken strings on the lute symbolizing discord. We have a, a Martin Luther prayer book open, uh, I mean hymn book open. Um, and uh, other uh, subtle symbols in, of the time in, in terms of religious strife. Also, uh, the division between secular and religious authorities could be seen, uh, but could be alluded to. Uh, Jean de Dinfield on the left is dressed as a worldly um, aristocrat, whereas Georges de Selve on the right is dressed in uh, the uh, relig in religious clothing. The painting also includes an anamorphic image in the form of a panel, what seems to represent a panel painting in the lower part of the painting, but actually is an anamorphic image. And uh, if you tilt your, if you put your head to the right of your screen and get in an extreme angle, you, you see that it morphs in uh, through foreshortening. It will appear to be a skull. Of course, skulls are memento mori. You can see the broken string there, symbolic of the uh, religious strife of this time.
and all of the tools of uh, various scientific tools and models and uh, devices that are used uh, in the uh, representing the interests of these two men. In France, the portrait of Francis I, uh, sort of a symbolic power portrait of the power of the king, where the body is represented by Jean Cloy as, as uh, per disproportionately large, uh, and the fine clothing, sort of the symbols of power. Also for Francis I at Fontainebleau, uh, 